Probably 100% of it is spiritual. The Bible says that God is the father of all spirits. Remember that verse that says that all perfect and good gifts come from the Lord. In whom there is no shadow of turning. From the father of all spirits. So every spirit moving on earth. The father of that spirit is God. God. God of all flesh. Now, that, that's not a coincidence. The reason why they use the word Father of all spirits and God of all flesh because every spirit carries the DNA of the Father. Yet every flesh has been created by God. So, so there's nothing on the earth of which God is not the source. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 32 verse 27 is there. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Every flesh. That, and, the, and, the, and why they employ the word God there is because that is his creation attribute. But when it comes to spirit, we call him Father. Father. On flesh is God. But on the spirit is Father. Which means he birthed the spirit. And he created the flesh. Praise the Lord. But that is just a nugget for you to think about today. Praise the Lord. So they call him the father of, all, of the father of all spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, we are in a, we are in a season when, when, when God is causing us to build altars. Because everything that begins, that every spiritual thing can only be handled in a spirit form. Amen. If you're, with, if you're dealing with anything in the spirit, you have to deal with it spiritually. So, in, in that conversation within me this morning, I came up with a conclusion. If a believer is to be successful, they have to be more spiritual than physical. You have to be more spiritual than, than your kernel. What does the Bible say? Bible gambetia. To be spiritually mind, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. Praise the Lord. So carnality can open the gate of death. But when you are in the spirit, you cause life to come. Amen. Amina. This week I shared that one of the things that altars do Godly altars uh, Is that one of the things they do Is, is that they, they will cause you to have what we call divine establishment uh, Divine establishment will simply mean that nothing in the future will change that can alter God's will for your life. Psalms 8 and 9. Let me show you a man who was established by God. Okay, verse number 2. He says, I will declare that your love stands firm forever. And that you have established your faithfulness in the heavens itself. Verse 3, you said, 
I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Verse 4, I will establish your seed forever. And will build up your throne for all generations. So God looks at David and says, I am pleased with you. I will establish you for a long time. No matter what changes in the coming years, I have established you. I have put you, what I have said to you shall be established. Nobody will alter it. I have seen people that had money begging for, for food. You have seen powerful men. You even go to a village and they say that was a minister of government. But all he has is the title now. Honorable. They call him honorable. But everything is gone. But do you know what God says about establishment? God is saying when I begin a work in you. When I establish you. I will establish your lineage and your seed. Do you know that these biblical figures are very powerful? Uh, the people, 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 the, the figures, the people. These are powerful men. I'll, I'll tell you why. Some of these men existed how many years ago? You're talking about a lot of years. And today we still stand in Narukolongo talking about them. Some of you don't even remember the last name of your, of your late grandfather. There's something as powerful as, as, as divine establishment. These guys were told generations. They were prophesied upon generations. It's not a coincidence that we still preach about them. God had established them. God established them. And people after they are dead had reason to write about them. Even in the days of Jesus Christ, a man like Bad Myers, looks at Jesus and says, Son of David, have mercy on me. The very son of God. They refer to him as the son of David. Why? Because David was divinely established. Can I declare today? Upon this altar, God will divinely establish your future. So when God builds a generation or establishes something. It will not break. Nobody will stop it. You know, every time God is shifting this ministry to another level, I, I don't know why the figure he brings to me is Pastor Kayanja. But yesterday, he even took it to another level. This time, Pastor Kanya did not come alone. He even came with Pastor Jessica Kayanja. And this was a little bit on, on a whole new dimension. And, and you know, you need to, by the way, you need to be very spiritual. So last night, I, I, I was at church, so I, I took the children. So I took the kids with me. And and as we were leaving the car. And this is why you have to be very, very spiritual. Belva looks at me, gets a pen from which the pens are always there. And the pens are always there. But she told me, Daddy, get the pen. You may need to write something when you are in your room.
So I took the pen, but then I did not. So I, I, I took the pen, but, but when I was laughing, I was like, this young girl is patronizing me. You know? know? So, but I took the pen. Then, in the middle of the night, God speaks to me about something, and I think it was very, very important. I woke up, and I said to myself, I shall remember it. Usually I would write down. <laughs> so I didn't write. It was the middle of the night, so I woke up. It, it was really important. So I went back to sleep. That's when, that's when I, I, I see Pastor Kayanja, Pastor Jessica here. Uh, Pastor Kayanja, you're so comfortable. Pastor Kayanja this time was so comfortable when I saw him here. He even led the practice of the worship team. He, he sang with, with them. Practice. He practiced with so them. when I wake up, the only memory I have is of the last vision. The other one is gone. I was so bothered. Even now I'm asking God, what were you telling me? Because it was really important. But the girl told me right down. So if I was really spiritual more, more than I was physical yesterday. I would have understood that tonight I have to write something. So I need to remember that thing. But, do you see that thing in the spirit? Or Pastor Kayanja coming here. Pastor Jessica coming here. I one of the things he did yesterday after doing practice with the choir, he took me around this place and he told me I've given you money to buy. Now, that is spiritual. Uh oh. So, in the physical realm, we have an assurance that what we cannot buy with our own money, the Holy Ghost has given us power to buy it. This week and this month of August, I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are about to have a visitation on your life. If somebody says the man, may God establish it. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. You get a minute, you must I am divinely established. Speak it seven times. Uh huh. Oh. Three. Come on, church. Four. Uh -huh. Five. Six. I'm divinely established. And seven. Divinely established. That simply means that God has given you establishment for the years to come. Yesterday, I made, yesterday I taught, I mean on Friday in the lunch hour, I taught the people. It is not a coincidence that Abraham's lineage was established. He did not even have any child become a drug addict. He didn't even have any kid go mad. Because I'm telling that you. That thing you see that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is not automatic. Do you know, do you know God can be your God? And your son will choose another God. But for God to choose to be the God of Kasibante and the God of Abraham and Belva. And then God after that for that is divine establishment. May the Lord establish you. Just imagine Abraham with all those promises. Isaac shows up and says, Daddy, I don't like your God. I'll pursue the gods of Egypt. The lineage will be dead. Okay, if you think it is ordinary, look at his cousin. Lord. Lot, Lot, even his daughter slept with him. 
when God wants to establish you, the power is on the altar. Oh, nobody is alive. The power is on the altar. Raise your hand and say, Jesus, establish me in this month of August. I want about nine people to say, Jesus, tell him, Jesus. I ask to be established. That is why I'm here today. Let me tell you, my friend. God is going to put you in a door. Even if they put you, you even if they believe, nobody will be able to take away what God has done. Somebody say, Yes, Lord. Establishment in jobs is not. It's not as ordinary as we think it is. But even not everybody who's working is successful. Some people just work and work and work and work. Some people work for 10 years and there's no difference. Some place, some position, some kind of life. It is not ordinary that you find Joseph. It's not an everyday story that a slave can become a prime minister. Those boys had an altar. It's not ordinary that Moses can survive on River Nile. Those boys had a word established. But you tell me why no one can turn. Let me show you scripture. Genesis 15. We are talking about divine establishment on the altar. Look at verse number 9. The Lord said to Abraham, Bring me a heifer of three years old. A female goat of three years old. A ram of three years old. Why would God be looking for such a consistent number? Here he's specific. I want three. Because every altar must have a pattern. It's a pattern. Exactly. It's a pattern. That is why when I was calling you to build an altar for August, I gave you a pattern. I made it so easy that everybody here can have 8,000 at least. But let me show you the power of disobedience. Somebody here can, have, can get 20,000. Put it in in the envelope and bring on, on the altar. For this particular cause, I'm, I'm talking about. But 20,000 is more than 8,000. But God wanted the other one. There's, when you see the specification here, let me tell you the people that you find established by God, it is not a matter of words. The one thing that born again find problematic, we do not know how to obey. How many of you here has ever practiced witchcraft? But how many know? How many have discovered that when you used to go to the witch doctors, those guys give you instructions and you have to obey them. They say, if this is how it is, what hurts me, you obeyed all that. They tell you at three, you switch or you put on the alarm, you wake up. Stay in the boxer. Start turning to the side. Going backwards. You find a big adult doing, obeying that. 
Why are you jumping backward? That is what I was told. They don't even ask why. But you see, when this task I was, I was telling Pastor Ken on Friday, do you know that this is not just looking for a normal heifer? You have to go and ask how old is it? That's not a simple job. Because every altar, if it is going to work for you, it must cost you. Looking for a ram of three years. But why? See what happens after he did it. The Bible says, verses number 13, then the Lord said to him, no for certain, can you find for me a message version here? No for sure, I want you to know that whether it rains or shines. There is a version that says what do version egamba? that be assured even in your death that because of what you have done I am going to establish your children and your lineage. Today as I speak some of the men and women that are going to stand in a generation unwavered, unshaken they are going to be men who have an altar and you are one of them I said you are one of them you are one of them say I am one of them you are one of them today I take authority on everything that has been making you doubt your God just so that I can explain very well for you, for you. at this point Abraham goes to God praying for a child praying for an Isaac <laughs> but God told him you know what I want you to build me an altar in 3333 three, three, three. and then I will tell you what will happen then he told him no for certain your descendants the man went to pray for a child but because of the altar God told him I'm not talking about a child I'm talking about descendants I have already bypassed a child everybody can pray a prayer and get a child but to be established with this a lineage it happens on the altar where am I pushing more powerful than you can say amen everybody can pray and receive an Isaac but if you are to see Joseph when you are even barren it happens on the altar. Who can and tell them pastor is talking to you? The problem you cannot get revelation. You, know, you can try and preach revelation to somebody cano and you hate it. Let me establish something. Standing when you're barren. And you see your Joseph. You are able to bypass generations. And you see Joseph and Moses. That happens on the altar. The prayers that would give you Isaac are easy. The power to give you generations is called altar. By the way, we don't know how many months Abraham spent looking for a three-year-old Because you see, the Bible cannot tell you space of time. The Bible will say, and then she conceived and begat. You may think it was today and then tomorrow. No, 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 no. There is always a process. So we don't 
don't know how many months, how many years, but the man looked for what God wanted. And when he found it, there is a deadlock he broke in the spirit. God stepped into, God came from the future. Stepped into time and told Abraham the man has no title of a prophet. He has no title of a prophet. But ladies and gentlemen, he saw generations. God told him how he will die. He told him it will be of old age. This one cannot die by accident. Even if COVID comes, the Lord has established even how he will die. He says you shall die of your old age. You will live long enough. The man died conceiving and convinced he was sure that his lineage is established. I hear something. Abraham will never have to pray again concerning these children that they will fear the Lord because God has chosen his seed. Whatever came out of him even Ishmael, everything out of him, God had decided because of the altar, I have established this man. He says what? He says, there shall be strangers in the country, not their own. Do you know the power in that word? God spoke the nation. Katonda ya yogera egwanga. When a man praying is burning. O musaji ya saba mugumba. Na yoba sima yoba yoba vitegeera. I don't know for sure also. Because you're looking at me as if you're not understanding what I'm saying. Somebody's saying, Pastor, pray for me to go. I need to go. I'm I can hear what you're saying. But lay your hand on me. I'll go and overcome. Before we get there, because we shall, I want you to understand Altars can establish a future. If when you find Joseph a leader, a prime minister in Egypt, okay. For you, you think you can do anything in this time to stop anything. Yusuf. You cannot. Because what he is established was established so many years ago before he was even born. It was established a long time ago. Abraham died and God said, I will be responsible to check on this lineage. Let me tell you. Don't think that those dreams you have which are of God are from your own mind. There are people here those things that you dream when your brothers are bowing to you. It is because you have a rooting on a certain altar. Let me go to the opposite. Now those things that you dream when you're being chest, you're naked. They also have their roots. Because your grandparents say, our son and the descendants. And the descendants. So you're in Kampala now. But every time you dream, you dream dreaming about yourself in change. <laughs> they are chasing you. But you're in Kampala. In a tile house. But in the spiritual world, you're in the bush being Every morning you wake up scared. <laughs> <laughs> 
Those things have a rooting in the spirit. And part of what changes those things is altar prayer. Is building an altar. And God infuses a new lineage in you. Let me tell you, my friend. Even if you bind Joseph, even if you take Musa, and even if you throw him in the desert, because of the word the Lord spoke to him, God will fulfill that word. The Bible says in the, in the book of Exodus. Before I leave that, leave your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. God looks at Moses and he says to him, The reason I'm going to do this for you, I'm not doing this because of you. I am, look at Exodus chapter number three. Briefly. Just so that somebody would catch it. Number six. When God appears to Moses, He says to him what? I am the God of your what? I'm the God of your father. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. God introduces himself as the God of a man who opened the altars in heaven. And the voice of God established a generation. I hear a sound in heaven today by the power of the Holy Ghost. The God of your altar will deal with every enemy of your destiny. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. God is saying today, I am the God of your father Abraham. That power that Moses felt came because of an altar. Came because of an altar. God is really there Abraham. to Abraham and prophesy upon him. We build our altar for the month of God. May God be faithful before the end of this year. End of this year. May God show his, his faithfulness. First Chronicles 21. God does not only give you divine establishment for the future through the altar. No matter what changes in the future. May the Lord establish you in divine wealth. Number two, I declare by the authority of Christ, no matter what changes in the coming days, none of your people in your lineage will ever live again in a rented home. It is God who establishes that. Maybe you came to just take time and go. But ask your neighbor, why did you come to Jesus? Maybe you're one of those who are just here to go to heaven. Who say, I came to Jesus to only take me to heaven. But we are going to heaven. But we have to have an impact while we are here. God told Abraham, you will die, don't you worry. But I'm going to help your generation. God can establish the lineage. Some of you are here, I'm telling you the truth. I want that to sit in your spirit. Some of you are in the building. But even if you run out of work, nobody will ever know you have no job. Because your supply and your source is not your job. Your source is in Jehovah God. Do you know it is not normal? That Israel is a country even now. Those guys had something bigger than what we can see in the physical realm. 
How can you leave your country for 400, okay, for, for 70 years? Oh, so we'll talk about Monsi, you come and make me a when God told Abraham, he told him, your sons will come back here after 400 years. But even, even the ones who went into bondage did not know that they were going into bondage for 400 years. He said, God is watching over his world. You cannot cause them to fail. A time came when they're in a place where there's no food to grow. Because of the covenant, God cooked food in heaven. 40 years. Every morning, the angels woke up to cook. Wait, Gabriel. And they would deliver. The Bible says on the weekend it was meat. The Bible says weekend The food was so funny. Five days a week. It melts away. When the sun comes, it melts. Once you keep it, it becomes rotten. But on, on Sabbath, when you keep it, it is fresh. Then God told Moses, pick a portion and put it in the Ark of the Covenant. And that thing stayed fresh for all the... <laughs> What food is that? What food is that? May God feed you from the bread of heaven. I said, may God supply to you from the food of heaven. Because of the Uganda never Even if Uganda runs out, you will get the money you need in the name of the Lord. The problem why, why most of you can never be established. Your trust is in your jobs. Your income, your husband, but let me tell you. I do not know why. And said in CAT, the world scares me. Somebody can be rich. Very powerful. What happened? And you find them tomorrow and wonder what happened to them. But let me ask a question. Is it only me who sees them or when I Or you also see them? Have you ever seen them before? Somebody was powerful before, but they are now broke. Raise your hand. Have you ever seen those people? There is a, a man in Kampala here, a young man. He used to throw money like this. There is somebody who got money here in Uganda. And he bought the Uganda cranes. Do you remember that guy? Some of you are saying you were not born. You were born, your are <laughs> Because <laughs> you remember very well. When they were holding an umbrella over his head in Nambol, he showed up in a chopper. Of course, I'm not just fine because I'm rejoicing over somebody's failure. What I'm saying is that money can come and go. But the Josephs, from when they left prison until they died, whatever they became, they were never less than that. It was from glory to glory. From power to power, this will be your portion forever. Can I prophesy? You will never go down, says the Lord. Uh, morning service can play a mina and a sober college. I want you to shout a man and forget you a manager where you work from. Yeah. 
Munyabeko. Help me. We are going to shout at you. I want you to forget your husband. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed. Established forever. Hey, Amen. I will be divinely established. You are joking. Let them fall. We will go forward in Let them God is establishing a us a road. We will not go back. 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 We you will not be in a car this month and be on a bicycle next year. In the name of our God, I decree under the authority of Christ. Every year for you will be a year of an added value upon your life. Yes. Yes. Call Jesus with power. Oh, God, establish me. Establish me, O Lord. First Chronicles chapter 21. Look at verse 1. Satan did what? Satan rose up against what? Israel. What did he do? He made Israel sin against God. By inciting David. There are some thoughts that come from the altar of the devil. You can be there and say, did you know? Let me divorce. And they ask you why. They say no. That man eats badly. Let me leave him. And when you tell people the reason afterward, it doesn't make sense to them. But you have gotten a good thought that has established itself in your mind. Somebody can wake up and say, my boss really can belittle. And you feel on the inside of you an agency. And you say, I have to abuse him this week. So that he knows where he stops. <laughs> I knew I would abuse you. I want you to know your limits. By the time you're done abusing your boss, you have lost your job. You come to church and start praying. One door will close. Another will open. And you make that prayer for nine years. <laughs> it began as an incitement from hell. But yet, church and the kanga kusoka soke bakuvam gain. Oh no! Ah, the campaign permit that she came out to come to Judis. That she came, she was Judis. She am back. Manange, Yangenda, my very first job. Nangola mo banka. Ngaba tu kose sanga ngamba nti ban nangi ya bantu ba nongaba bonya bonya. Balo zafu tu tui naba tuaga la ni wangu wada ba tuaza ko e wafeni na tuiba vunze nzo soko fufu nomri mo mbang kama chukachona ambanga ba tu manida zembere di kajansi inke ra kule la nangu labi ko ba nyombe soto ukaleti inke ra nemba wandi kile balua nemba gamba allu no banga mbie ko na ringenda out no moani na kafumbi ruandi mugolo allu gezge zolo njenyo yangu ba tu jagenda nemba gamba ni gu manida mu mani zajeva mu mani omami gwenina resigning and ended out quick and no one Nen to Kewaka. Why, why you tell me as a video sat no mammy a chak a jabangue young woman in Amuguam? Now you're banning come away. Gane go back. Not to get to it to lack a work of it. Oh, my Zugumu, Ebidi, Esatu, Moaka Gumu, Nagendo Kulaba, a Cassenta Konaka, the Catholic Draka, the Catuaganga Takaguao. Neturandiko Sabidiza, Ato Sabidiza Banga, Chinga, and Shavanakoa. Nengamba yesu nsasira. Nintani kukunonya kujiza asono. Nenenenya. Nengamba mnesiri bidamu. 
Zagola ba nene nyeza yesu nansa asida. Nansi dizomu ni mugwegu mugurieri kwe nadine gobieko. Atenga mpandene woni ingi sivida angamu. Edanze muna anga baza nyese midi mumbasa asida. Incitement from hell. He counted, he took a census of people and God got annoyed. And he sent a, a, a plague. And it killed the children of Israel. Verse 14. So the Lord sent a plague to Israel. 70,000 men died. This thing was so serious that God himself said enough. Verses 18. Then the angel of the Lord ordered God. Tell David. To go up. Build an altar to the Lord. On the threshing floor of Aluna. Go and tell him. The only way you stop what began in the spirit. Because it began with Satan. Build an altar. Today. Whatever in the spiritual world we will not just die by fire and it will die after we've established our altar so look at verse 24 because he was a king they wanted to give him a free thing but he said I insist in paying a full price I will not take for the Lord what is what what is yours or a sacrifice that costs me nothing. An altar means there has to be a sacrifice. Now God can order it in different dimensions. Listen to me. Every time the Lord wants to break something in my life, he has asked me for a sacrifice. And many of you here know it. Look at your life. Every new level means sacrifice. Now, it can be in giving, it can be in obedience to ministry, it can be in fasting, but the people who are established by God, they know how to hear God. What does an altar have to do with the plague? These guys go to a COVID-like situation. But theirs was worse. On, on day one, 70 people, you were just, you'd be walking like this. And God was wise. He struck down only the soldiers and the men. He killed them, killed them, killed them, killed them. Killed them. They did not know what was killing them. But the angel told the prophet, go tell that guy to build me an altar. One of the things that the altar does is to permanently stop the hand of the wicked. But he says, I will not do what doesn't cost me. So the man got 600 shekels. Sekedilukaga. And he bought. He offered a sacrifice. Now I And the Bible says. And the plague stopped. I declare today. Whatever has been against you. Against your future. It will stop today. In the mighty name of Jesus. It was in the same place. By the way. By the way. Just for your Bible knowledge. It was in the same place. That Moses. That David. That what he paid for. Is a place he also dedicated where they began to build the temple. Praise the Lord. But it will be for your own education. Later on.